Hi, I'm Jade and I'm a medical student in Leicester. In this video, we will cover some disorders of mood and affect, including mania and bipolar affective disorder. We will also touch upon the Mental Health Act and the main civil sections used in psychiatry. Please be aware that in this video, we will talk about self-harm and suicide. Mania describes the combination of symptoms and signs, including elevation of mood, increased energy and activity, feelings of well-being and efficiency, pressure of speech, flight of ideas, increased sociability and sexuality, social disinhibition, decreased need for sleep, and reduced concentration. This usually leads to severe disruption of work and other activities of daily living. Patients usually have little or no insight into their condition. For mania to be diagnosed, at least three symptoms of mania must have been present for at least seven days. In hypomania, the symptoms and signs are present to a lesser degree, there may be partial insight, and there's less interference with work and other activities of daily living. For a diagnosis of hypomania to be made, the symptoms must have been present for at least four days. Mania can occur with or without psychotic symptoms, including grandiose or persecutory delusions and hallucinations, which are usually auditory. Mania can be triggered by high levels of stress, a significant life event, changes in sleep patterns, use of recreational drugs or alcohol. Mania can also be triggered by use of antidepressant medications. Patients with a personal history of bipolar disorder, schizoaffective disorder, or postpartum psychosis, or with a family history of bipolar disorder, are at an increased risk of developing mania and hypomania. Patients with mania are managed in the hospital. If they are violent or pose a risk to themselves or others, then they must urgently be referred for assessment by the psychiatry team. If they are unwilling to be admitted, then the Mental Health Act may need to be used, and we'll come back to this in a bit. Any antidepressants must be stopped in a patient with mania, and an antipsychotic such as haloperidol, olanzapine, aripiprazole, catiapine, or risperidone would either be started or the dose increased. Ideally, medications should be given orally. Also consider starting a mood stabiliser like lithium or sodium valproate. Both have good evidence, but consider the implications for women of childbearing age. Both come with a risk of teratogenicity if used during the first trimester of pregnancies, so women should be advised to use reliable contraception, such as a copper coil. Some side effects of lithium include polydipsia, polyuria, a fine tremor, weight gain, impaired kidney function, and hypothyroidism. Therefore, before starting lithium, check ease as lithium is renally excreted and nephrotoxic, TFTs, pregnancy status, and also do an ECG. Lithium has a narrow therapeutic window. Toxicity can occur due to renal impairment, dehydration, and interaction with other renally excreted medications like NSAIDs, loop diuretics, and ACE inhibitors. Lithium toxicity is reversible, but if it's left untreated, it can be fatal. Some signs of toxicity include a coarse tremor, hypotension, nausea and vomiting, ataxia and seizures. It's managed with supportive measures, including dialysis if needed. After initiating lithium, levels are measured 12 hours after the first dose. Once a week until the levels are stable for four weeks, and then every three months after this. User knees are also measured every six months due to the risk of impaired renal function, and TFTs are measured every year due to the risk of hypothyroidism. As I mentioned the Mental Health Act earlier, let's briefly revise the main civil sections used in psychiatry. The Mental Health Act is a law that allows people with a mental disorder who do not give their consent to be admitted to hospital, investigated, and treated for their own safety and that of others. Section 2 lasts for 28 days and it's used for the admission and assessment of a patient with a suspected mental disorder. Section 3 lasts for 6 months and it's used for the treatment of a mental disorder. 
Section 3s can be renewed. Patients can appeal against their section during the first six months. For Section 2 or 3 to be completed, an AMP and two approved clinicians, one of which must be Section 12 approved, must all be in agreement. Section 5-2 is a holding order completed by any doctor used for the emergency detention of inpatients on any ward for assessment of a suspected mental health problem. The holding order lasts for 72 hours. Section 5-4 is used for the urgent detention of inpatients receiving treatment for a mental disorder for up to six hours. It can be carried out by a registered mental health nurse. Section 135 allows a police officer to enter someone's house and take them to a place of safety if they're thought to be suffering from a mental disorder. A section 136 allows a police officer to remove someone who seems to be suffering from a mental disorder from a public place and take them to a place of safety for assessment. Finally, let's talk about bipolar affective disorder. Bipolar affective disorder is a chronic mood disorder characterised by two or more episodes in which a patient's mood and activity levels are very disturbed. This must include at least one episode of mania or hypomania and either a further episode of mania or an episode of depression. The worldwide lifelong prevalence rate of bipolar disorder is around 2.4%. Bipolar affective disorder is thought to be caused by both biological and environmental factors. One proposed hypothesis for the biological cause of bipolar disorder is the monoamine hypothesis, which is that episodes of elevated mood are caused by increased central monoamines like noradrenaline, dopamine and serotonin. Some investigations carried out on people with suspected bipolar disorder include bloods like FBCs, TFTs, Usenes, LFTs, serum glucose and calcium. They will also receive a urine drug test to rule out drug-induced psychosis and a CT head may be done if there is clinical suspicion of a space-occupying lesion in the brain. The main goal of investigations is to rule out differential diagnoses and get an idea of the patient's physical baseline before initiating treatment. Can you think of some differential diagnoses for bipolar affective disorder? One differential is hypomania or mania. Remember that if it is the first episode of symptoms, then the patient cannot have a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Another differential is cyclothymia, which is a persistent instability of mood involving periods of mild depression and mild elation, which are not severe or prolonged enough to be classified as bipolar disorder. Schizophrenia is another important differential to consider. To differentiate between bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, you should screen for Schneider's first rank symptoms in the history. That is, delusional perceptions, third person auditory hallucinations, thought interference and passivity phenomenon, as they will not be present in patients with bipolar affective disorder. Other differentials to consider include illicit drug use or withdrawal and a space occupying lesion of the brain. Patients with a new diagnosis of bipolar affective disorder should have a full risk assessment done, including finding out if the patient drives or not. Patients with acute hypomania or mania must not drive and must notify the DVLA. Patients are managed using a biopsychosocial approach. If the patient presents with severe mania, then atypical second-generation antipsychotics like olanzapine, aripiprazole or quetiapine are used and they are continued until four weeks after the acute episode has resolved. A mood stabiliser like lithium is started and continued lifelong. Lithium is also used for self-harm as it reduces rates of suicide and is also used for treatment-resistant depression. Even if a patient presents with low mood, antidepressants must not be trialled in someone with bipolar disorder or anyone with a history of mania or hypomania, as this can induce mania. CBT and psychodynamic psychotherapy is used to help people to explore the reasons why they feel and behave in a certain way and come up with strategies to cope with future stressors and difficulties that they may face. Social support groups and calming activities are also used. 
Bipolar disorder is a chronic, lifelong illness. On average, 10 episodes are experienced in a lifetime. The risk of recurrence is high. There is a high lifetime suicide risk in patients with bipolar disorder. About 50% of people with bipolar affective disorder have had at least one suicide attempt during their lifetime, and around 20% die from the attempt. Therefore, regular follow-ups should be booked, risk assessments should be regularly carried out, and safety netting is essential. Thanks for watching.